So hello, everybody. I think it's my turn now. Thanks for the previous demos. So uh, for those who don't know me yet, I think there's uh, quite some of you. I'm Matej, I'm from Consensus Lab, and I'm working on a consensus algorithm that is fast and scalable for being deployed in the subnets that uh, Alfonso was just showing. And so let me share my screen. Green. I hope you see everything. Very good. So I will be talking about Mir BFT, which is a scalable consensus implementation for everyone, not just for the subnets, hopefully. And uh, since this is a project that most of you haven't seen yet, I will first spend a few minutes on introducing it, say what it is, uh, how it works, and how it can be used. And then I show a little demo of how it can actually be used for, for an application. So Mir BFT is a framework for implementing distributed protocols that, that has a focus on consensus protocol, but ideally, uh, should be able to implement any kind of uh, distributed protocols, or let's say a, by a wide variety of consensus protocols. It is available at uh, uh, on GitHub, and it is part of the Consensus Lab YT project, uh, the, it, which is the project about scalable consensus, and you can uh, look at more details about the project also in the link. Actually, I will post in the chat um, when I find the chat window. Here is the chat. I will post the link to this presentation so you can look at the presentation and click on the links. Okay, just a little, uh, just a little heads up. Uh, the name Mir BFT and the location on GitHub might be updated in the very near future, so stay tuned for that. Don't focus on the naming for now. All right. So, how does uh, the implementation of the framework work? Basically, a distributed protocol. Uh, always has some nodes that interact and they send each other messages and uh, they collaborate to perform some, some task in common. So the basic abstraction is the node and every machine that is running the protocol instantiates one node like this. And uh, the implementation is as modular as possible. So the node basically just provides an internal mechanism for different modules of the node to communicate with each other with each other and uh, for each perform to its task so there is in in there is some application module there's a module that actually contains the protocol logic there is a module that takes care of the network communication like sending actual messages on the network there is a module that stores uh, the payloads of the requests that are being agreed upon in the consensus protocol. And there are some other modules that uh, are not really that important for this explanation now. And uh, once you instantiate a module, you have three functions that you can run on it. It's that you can call. One function is run, which starts all the machinery and the processing that is, uh, that is necessary for the, for, for the node to function. There is the submit request function. So for a, for a consensus protocol, when somebody wants to, when a client wants to uh, submit a request for ordering, for, for agreeing upon, uh, they need to call the submit request function and insert a request in the, in the node. And the status function is just for debugging purposes. We don't need to know too much about it now. Now, the node itself, is just basically implementing a slightly fancier event loop that is getting all the events produced by, by the modules, storing them in a buffer, and then processing them and distributing uh, those events to uh, the modules where they should go. Each module then processes whatever events uh, it needs to process, potentially creating more events, and so on and so on. So this is just an event loop. Okay, so. This is the very high level architecture of it. Now, uh, how do we use that? So this is an excerpt from the code, how 
how uh, MirBSD can be actually used to, to implement a distributed application and to offload as much as possible from, uh, from the programmer such that the programmer can just implement the application or the protocol they need without worrying about too much more. So let me show you a few lines of the code now. So if we want to implement a simple chat application where everybody running a node can, will participate in a, in, a, in, a, in a group where they can exchange messages, we need to implement the logic of the chat application. And this is a very simple one. We have a chat application here, and the only state the chat application has is an array of messages that, that is totally ordered from, from each uh, participant. And uh, it needs also the uh, reference to the request store, which is a request store module, so it can actually access the payloads of the messages that, that are being sent around. And so if you want to implement an application, if you want a distributed application with MirBSD, you need to create you need to create uh, an object that uh, implements an interface that consists of only three functions: apply, which receives a batch of requests, and uh, whatever the requests are, they just get applied to the state. So in this concrete case, we just cycle through all the requests in the batch, and what we do, we we create a chat message, we print it. Uh, it is a client so and so sent message so and so, and uh, the message is is just the request data, and we append it to the list of messages that uh, that the application has. And then, in order to be able to restart and catch up with the state, we need to the application need to be able to create a snapshot, which is simply serializing all the state in an array of bytes, and it needs to be able to restore its state from such an array of bytes, which is not that important for now. All right, uh, so how do we actually do it? As we saw, as we saw here, we have a node that has several modules, and this is exactly how it looks like, uh, what it looks like in the code. So first we create some modules like the networking module, which the library, the MirBFT library has sub packages that, that actually provide some implementations of, of uh, those modules. So we have a gRPC-based network transport module. We have a request store. For now, we ju just use a volatile, volatile request store also provided by uh, the implementation itself. And uh, we need to also tell the node which distributed protocol it actually should be executed, so which protocol logic there, uh, there is. In this case, we use the only uh, protocol that is being implemented. It's not even yet implemented. It's it's quite stubby, but uh, uh, it already can be used for for the demo purpose. So it's ISS. It's a total order broadcast protocol. It's a consensus protocol, and uh, we create some configuration for it, and we create a protocol uh, also using a library function because the ISS package is provided also by the library, and then we assemble the node the same way uh, that as was shown on the slide. We create a new node, we give it its own ID, we give it some configuration parameters, and we say which modules it should be using. It will be using the net module, the request or the, uh, the protocol module that we just created, and we just tell it what application should be there for processing the agreed upon requests. The crypto module, as you can see, it also needs a crypto module. We only have a dummy crypto module implementation step, but uh, this will change soon, hopefully. and. Uh, then, then there we we create some uh, we create some other boilerplate code for actually passing the requests to the uh, to the implementation, and we read we read uh, messages from the command line, and we submit the requests to the to the node. So how does it work? I already prepared for a, a deployment of four nodes. And uh, basically, we just run the chat demo application here, which is which is the main file I was just showing. It executes the main file that I was just showing. One is with, one is with ID 0, one is with ID 1, ID 2, ID 3. So I let me start all of them. So they all 
initialize, they connect to each other. And I put, I uh, say, I pressed enter once more on client two. That's why everybody already sees that client two sent an empty message. But uh, so basically, when I type in some message, some hello uh, message, I, I press enter. What happens is that it uh, creates a request for the for the total or the broadcast system. It submits it to the to the node. The node agrees on receiving that request, and all, all of these uh, deliver the request to the chat application, which which prints it on the screen now. And uh, given the implementation of the protocol, uh, all these will will be in total order. So if I really quickly uh, if I really quickly typed something in different windows, like I would have to be very fast, manually is not possible, then uh, everybody would receive the messages in the same order because they're totally ordered. Now, this is a demo application, but uh, the same principle applies to the consensus protocol implemented in the subnet. And that's the, the goal for the, for the next months to actually make this part of the subnet consensus protocol. So that's it for the first demo of this. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll leave the floor for the next demo.